Welcome to this presentation on how to help clients who are overwhelmed, stuck, and struggling to take action. I'm grateful and excited that you're here. Thank you for showing up. My name is Susan Hyatt. I'm a master certified life coach and founder of the University for Life Coach Training. I've been coaching clients for 14 years and I've had the privilege of working with people who've enrolled in my online programs, people who've attended my retreats, and people who've hired me for one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Thousands of clients over these last 14 years. I've coached people through business launches, messy divorces, midlife crisis, through recessions and economic downturns, through self-esteem and body image drama, through pretty much every situation or challenge that you can imagine. And I've seen what causes people to get really stuck and what helps people to get unstuck. In today's presentation, I'm gonna teach you a powerful exercise that you can do with your clients immediately. An exercise to help them get unstuck and take action. And what I especially love about this exercise is it's universal and works for pretty much any scenario. You've got a client who wants to transition into a new career, but they're struggling to take action. They know what they need to do, but they're just not doing it. This exercise will help. You've got a client who wants to make more money, but can't seem to sit their ass down and do the work required to make it happen. This exercise will help. You've got a client who dreams about writing a book and just keeps stalling and just isn't doing it. This will help. If you've got a client who is really immobilized, stuck in that heavy mud of overwhelm and struggling to bust a move, this presentation will really help you to help them. I have so many things that I'm stoked to share with you, so let's begin. Before we charge ahead with this presentation, let's pause and check in. Are you in the right place? Well, you're in the right place if you're a counselor, therapist, social worker, life coach, business coach, wellness coach, nurse, physician, or some other type of healer, helper, or service provider. You're also in the right place if you're an educator, school administrator, or someone who's in charge of leading a classroom or developing curriculum for students. Maybe you're a manager or supervisor, somebody who leads a team. You're definitely in the right place. And if you work with clients, students, or colleagues, and you notice people are getting overwhelmed, getting stuck, struggling to stay motivated, struggling to accomplish their goals, maybe you often hear your clients say things like, I know what I need to do, but for some reason, I'm just not doing it. Or perhaps you hear clients say things like, I'm smart, I'm successful, I've done plenty of things before, so why is this one thing so hard for me? Why can't I figure this out? Why am I so stuck in just this one area? And you are also in the right place if you have a challenging client who isn't responding to the techniques you've already tried. You've done everything in your usual bag of coaching tricks, but for whatever reason, this particular client is still stuck and not getting results. And you wanna figure out how to help this person break through that stuckness. Okay, so if any of that resonates with you, then stay right here because you're in the right place. Keep watching you will gain a lot from this presentation. Now, when you signed up to watch this presentation, you should have received a downloadable worksheet. Did you get it? We emailed it to you, might've gotten stuck in spam land, but check, download that worksheet, print it out if you can. And then as we go along, you can take notes and write ideas onto that worksheet. Now I know it's a cute worksheet, but use it. Get it dirty, write on it. I want you now to write down one reason why you're watching this today. Why are you here? What do you hope to learn or gain? Maybe there's a particular client that you really wanna help. So fill in the blank, I'm here today because. All right, so what are we covering today? Here's what you're gonna learn from our time together. Five reasons why people, even extremely smart people, get stuck and struggle to take action. Why willpower is not the answer to this issue. Often people think, if I just had more willpower, then I could do this. But willpower is not the missing ingredient. And I'll explain what the missing piece actually is. 
We're gonna have a powerful exercise that you can use with your clients to help them get unstuck. This is one of my favorite exercises ever and it's super effective. I guarantee you, you've never seen it before because I've never taught it publicly before. This is a world premiere. <laughs> and last but not least, we're gonna talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'll share a few strategies you can use when you're working with clients who are part of a marginalized group, people who are black, indigenous, people of color, differently abled, or part of the LGBTQIA plus community. Because look, if you have a client who belongs to a group that's been marginalized, oppressed, traumatized, then that person's gonna need a different kind of care than someone who has not been through those experiences. The mindset technique that helps a straight white man get unstuck might not work with a black queer woman who has experienced a lifetime of trauma. That woman may need a different approach. So this might seem like common sense, yet it's something so many of us in the service professions forget. So we're gonna talk about working with diverse clients in this presentation. Because when a black client or a queer client or differently abled person comes into your office or on Zoom with you, I wanna make sure you're ready to serve that person effectively. And I know you want that too. Okay, so what we're covering today sound like a good plan? Yes, yes? All right, let's keep rolling. All right, we'll dive into our first section in just a moment. But first, I wanna do a quick introduction. If you've attended any of my classes before, welcome back. And if we've never connected before, hi and welcome. Again, my name is Susan Hyatt. I'm a master certified life coach and business coach. And like I mentioned earlier, I've been coaching clients for the last 14 years. I'm also a wife and a mom of two kids and an author of two books with one more on the way. Prior to becoming a life coach, I was a residential real estate agent. I was one of the top sellers in my region and accomplished a great deal of financial success but I was miserable back then. I was exhausted all the time. My inner dialogue was extremely negative. I bullied and criticized myself and spoke to myself so viciously all the time. I felt stuck in my career. I wanted a new path in life, but I couldn't figure out how to make that shift. I felt resentful of my husband and blamed him for my unhappiness. And I used food to cope with stress. I put on 35, 40 extra pounds, it was a rough time in my life, to say the least. And if you see photos of me back then, I look like a completely different person. My eyes are flat, little sparkle. But then when I discovered the field of life coaching, my world completely changed. Working with a coach completely transformed my mental health and my entire life. And after hiring my first coach, I was so impressed by the experience that I realized I want to be a certified coach too. I want to share this with others. And that's how my coaching career began. So since those early days, I've grown my coaching practice from a very small operation to me um, to a multi-million dollar company with 10 full-time employees. Today, my company generates multi-millions per year, and I'm really proud to not just be a coach, but a CEO and team leader and job creator. It brings a lot of meaning to my life. So you may have seen me in places like, oh, the Oprah magazine and Women's World and Cosmopolitan and lots of other magazines and national TV shows. I get around. I'm also the founder of the University for Life Coach Training, and I'll tell you a little more about that later on. So here's a little info about me to give you some context about my credentials and what qualifies me to lead a presentation like the one you're watching right now. In just a moment, we're gonna dive into the main part of this presentation. But before we do that, I wanna encourage you to create a distraction-free zone for yourself. Close all those tabs on your browser, silence your phone, shut down Facebook, close the door, put on some noise-canceling headphones if you need to. Just do whatever you gotta do so that you can focus on this presentation. Because look, you've cleared a chunk of your day to watch this, so let's make this time count. Clearing distractions as a gift to yourself so that you can concentrate and really get the most out of this experience. All right, all set? Yay. Let's dive in. As a master certified coach, I've worked intimately with clients for many years. I've done thousands of coaching sessions. I've heard all the secret confessions. I've listened to all the obstacles and drama. I've seen incredible transformations and I've seen the blocks that get in people's way time and time again. Based on my observations, 
Here are five reasons why people, extremely smart people, get stuck and struggle to take action. They're not the only reasons, but they're some of the main ones I hear again and again. So depending on what kind of training you've had to do in the past, some of this might be a review for you and some might be new information. So here's why people get stuck. Number one, low quality thoughts. Number two, exhaustion. Number three, weak or non-existent support. Number four, imposter syndrome. Number five, locked door syndrome. Let's look at each of those factors more closely. So what's a high quality thought? It's a thought that makes you feel powerful. It's a thought that brings you energy. It's a thought that may sound like this. My work is important. I'm creative and resourceful. I may not achieve my goal overnight, but with consistency and persistence, I know I can get there. Okay, so what's a low quality thought? It's the actual opposite. It's a thought that makes you feel not powerful. It's a thought that drains your energy And it might sound something like this. This is too hard. I just can't do it. She's so talented. She's got something special that I don't have. I don't don't have that special thing that she's got. Why would anyone want to read a book that I wrote? I'm nobody. When you think those kinds of low quality thoughts, you generate low quality emotions, which leads to low quality action or inaction And that leads to really low quality results. So if you've got a client who is struggling to take action and achieve their goals, one major culprit is probably low quality thoughts. Another reason why people get stuck, exhaustion. All right, this may seem obvious, but it's often overlooked. If your client is struggling to work out consistently, struggling to finish a project, struggling to take courageous steps forward, struggling to stay motivated, This person might simply be very, very tired, physically exhausted, emotionally exhausted, or both. Especially right now, amidst the pandemic, recession, all the unique challenges that we've been facing in the past year or so, people are unusually tired. People are just flat out weary. And women especially, they're vulnerable to this exhaustion because of something called the invisible workload of women. Have you heard this term before? The invisible workload of women is a term that many feminist scholars use to describe the extra unpaid labor that women do every day to care for their spouse or partner, children, household, and community. This is something referred to as the second shift. A woman might work a full-time job, put in eight to 10 hours at her job, finish her work for the day, and then immediately begin her second shift of work. Laundry, cleaning, cooking, parenting, emotional caregiving, all the things. Now you might be thinking, well, wait a second, men do those things too. That's true. Men are doing more parenting and household labor than ever before. But women still, research shows, do significantly more. According to a 2020 report by Oxfam and the Institute for Women's Policy Research, women do 14 hours more housework than men per week. That's 728 extra hours a year, more than men. It really adds up, and it adds up to exhaustion. So again, if you've got a client, especially a female client, who's struggling to take action towards her goal, (laughs) exhaustion might be a major factor. She might have the right mindset. She might have a great plan. She might have all the tools she needs to succeed except for the fact that she's too damn tired to do what she needs to do. Look, I've been that woman, so I can fully relate. Another reason why your clients might be getting stuck, a weak or non-existent support network. So I recently interviewed my friend Robert Hartwell on my TV show, Go Time TV. Robert's an extremely successful, high-achieving person. He's a performing artist who's been in seven Broadway shows. He's danced on stage at the Tony Awards. He was featured in a music video with Pharrell and Jay-Z. He's the founder and CEO of a multi-million dollar musical theater education company. This is a man who rarely gets stuck and who is constantly accomplishing miraculous things. Robert mentors young students who dream about working on Broadway one day. So I asked him, Robert, Some of your students make it to Broadway and some do not. 
for the students who make it, what do those students have that the others don't? So when I asked him that question, and I gotta be honest, I was expecting him to say something like a positive attitude or hard work or talent, but that's not what he said. He told me a support network. The students who make it to Broadway, the ones who achieve their wildest dreams, these are the students who have a strong support network. They have parents cheering them on, they have a mentor who pushes them, they have peers who inspire them, they have people checking in, people who care. And this makes all the difference. And once Robert explained this to me, it made complete sense. And I see this all the time among my own clients. The clients who falter, who really, really struggle to get moving and stay moving, these are often people who are very isolated. So maybe they don't have enough support from their family of origin, their spouse or partner, their religious or faith community, or they don't have any peers who are working towards similar goals. So if you've got a client who seems really overwhelmed and stuck, someone who keeps procrastinating and avoiding the work that needs to be done, it could be that the big culprit is a lack of support system. So let's look at another factor that might be causing your clients to get stuck. Imposter syndrome. It disproportionately affects women. It's when you're completely qualified to do something, but for a variety of complex reasons, you don't believe you are. You have a distorted view of yourself. You see yourself as less qualified, less intelligent, less capable than you actually are. This is classic imposter syndrome, feeling like you're not enough when you absolutely are. This is that situation where you could literally get 10 PhDs and fill your entire wall with diplomas and have a thousand people praise you and tell you how brilliant you are, and yet you still don't completely believe it. You feel like you're somehow lacking or even fraudulent, like you don't belong in positions of power and leadership. You don't deserve a seat at the table. With my clients, I often notice a direct connection between imposter syndrome and procrastination. So for instance, a client longs to quit her corporate job and be self-employed, but she feels like she's not qualified enough to launch a consulting business. So she avoids every task on her to-do list. She doesn't file for an LLC. She doesn't launch her website. She doesn't trademark her systems and concepts. She doesn't introduce herself to potential clients. She shies away from doing all the crucial steps because deep down, she feels like an imposter. And this distorted perception of herself blocks her from doing the things she really needs to do to reach her goal. Imposter syndrome is a nasty beast. And we could devote a whole hour just to that topic alone, whole book. <laughs> okay, one more reason that your client might be struggling to take action. This is a term that I coined myself, locked door syndrome. So what's locked door syndrome? It's when you've tried and tried and tried so many times in the past, and no matter how much you try, the door is still locked in your face, often through no fault of your own. And at a certain point, you become so discouraged that you begin to lose hope that change is even possible. A good example of this would be, let's imagine you are a black woman. You have a startup business. You're seeking capital to grow your company. You've pitched to numerous investors, 35 pitch meetings, and every single person said no and refused to invest in your concept. Not only that, but several investors made racist comments or asked you ridiculous questions like, do you plan to get pregnant anytime soon? Insinuating that you won't be committed to your company if you become a mother. People, this type of thing happens all the time behind closed doors in investor meetings. Side note, out of all of the billions of dollars that investors dole out to startups every year, guess what percentage of that money goes to women of color? Less than 1%. So if you go through an experience like that, an experience where you feel like you're trying everything to unlock a door, but it will not open, that's really demoralizing. That can make you go, you know what? It's hopeless. Why even bother trying again? It didn't work in the past. Why should it next time be any different? And so you give up and you stop trying because it's too painful to try again. 
If you've got a client who can't seem to find the will to try again, this might be the issue. So we just discussed five of the main reasons why people get overwhelmed, stuck, and struggle to take action. So to recap, number one, low quality thoughts. Number two, exhaustion. Number three, weak support systems. Number four, imposter syndrome. And number five, locked door syndrome. Which of these have you experienced in your own life recently, maybe even in the last month? Fill in the blank on your worksheet. I have personally experienced what? Think about a client of yours who's overwhelmed, stuck, struggling to take action. And do you have a hunch that your client's dealing with one of those five things? Which ones? Fill in the blank. I suspect that my client is dealing with blank. Let's look at a few solutions for each of these issues. So we covered five issues and I have five suggestions for you. I want to be clear. These are just initial suggestions. This might not be the full picture of what your client needs, but it could be a starting point. So number one, if your client is struggling with low quality thoughts, try encouraging your client to identify one low quality thought and help change it to a high quality thought. So you can say to your client, when you feel stuck or overwhelmed, what are you saying to yourself in that moment? What's the most dominant thought in your head? Your client might say something like, in that moment, I'm usually thinking, this is going to take forever and I don't have enough time. Once your client has isolated that low quality thought, then together you can work on replacing it with a believable high quality thought. So a high quality replacement thought should be something like, this is a challenging project and it'll take time to complete and I'm creative. I can find a way to create the time that I need. Number two, if your client's struggling with exhaustion, try encouraging your client to fiercely prioritize self-care and pleasure. Have your client make a pleasure list and commit to infusing their life with more pleasure, play, and joy. If your client has a weak or non-existent support system, Try helping your client identify the support she already has. So she might actually have a great deal of support that she's just not remembering or seeing clearly. Or encouraging them to seek out the support that they need. So this could look like joining a club, enrolling in a program, finding an online community, or partnering with a friend or accountability buddy who shares the same goal. Number four, if your client's dealing with imposter syndrome, Try having your client make a victory list. You can have your client write down 10 challenging things that I've accomplished in the past or 10 reasons why I'm completely qualified to do this. Sometimes putting this in writing and a list can create a big shift for your client. So number five, if your client's experiencing locked door syndrome, first of all, it's important to name that this is happening and validate your client's emotions and acknowledge this is real. Acknowledge that they're not delusional or having a bad attitude. So if your client says, I experience racism on a daily basis and I've been blocked from opportunities because I'm Muslim or I'm a woman and I work in a male dominated industry and I sense that my colleagues don't respect me, something like that, believe them. Validate their experience. Acknowledge that racism is real, misogyny is real, prejudice is real, and the locked door syndrome is very real and this is not your client's fault. It's not an attitude problem or a willpower problem. It's a cultural systematic problem. So just naming this is so powerful and can help your clients feel seen and heard and understood. And from there, you can say to your client, you've tried to unlock this door numerous times in the past and it hasn't worked. So what could you do next time to ensure a different result and then work together creatively to brainstorm ideas? This is an opportunity to be creative and innovative and rebellious and win in spite of a system designed to make you fail. It's tough, but there's always a way to win. And you can win the game and be successful on your own terms. Others have done this and your client can do it too. Okay, people, those are a few suggestions. And again, 
those suggestions might just be the tip of the iceberg. Depending on your client's situation, they might need numerous therapy sessions or months of coaching in order to fully clear whatever block they're experiencing and gain traction towards their goal. But I hope these suggestions give you good places to begin. When it comes to helping your client clear blocks and take action, there's one approach that does not work. And I wanna mention what it is. When it comes to getting unstuck and taking action, many clients and many service providers mistakenly believe that the solution is willpower, right? So maybe you've even thought this yourself. You're trying to exercise regularly. You're trying to stop eating an entire sleeve of Oreo cookies every night, or you're trying to save more money, or you're trying to be more patient with your kids. And if you say to yourself, if I just have more willpower, more discipline, then I could do this. But willpower is not the missing ingredient. What I found is that most of my clients actually have very strong willpower. That's not what's missing. What's missing, the missing ingredient, is pleasure. All right, this might sound counterintuitive, so I'll explain. When you infuse more pleasure into your daily routine, it's astonishing how much this changes your stress levels and it boosts your energy levels and it clears overwhelm and shifts you into high gear. So pleasure makes you a better version of yourself and you can get pleasure from a wide variety of sources like music, from art, books, colors, textures, scents, from play, from rest. But most people are extremely pleasure deficient. Most people get a small amount of pleasure from Netflix and food and that's it. So when someone's pleasure deficient, then this person is gonna feel tired, stressed, brittle. And then they're gonna struggle to get moving and when they struggle to accomplish challenging goals because they're already so depleted, they struggle with consistency. They white knuckle their way into doing something, but it won't last. And this is why I constantly tell my clients, you do not need more willpower. What you need is more pleasure. Pleasure changes lives. So here's a story to illustrate that point. A client of mine used to be a complete workaholic. I'm talking 90 hours a week, chained to her desk, on call, checking emails 24 seven, insanity. She worked constantly and didn't take good care of herself. Her high stress lifestyle was catching up to her and she knew she needed to make some changes but she was struggling to change those habits. So for instance, she knew she needed to move her body regularly. She knew all the benefits of exercise, but she just wasn't doing it. Like many people, she kept thinking, if only I had more discipline, if only I had more willpower, then I could make this happen. I encouraged her to add a few more pleasurable things into her daily routine. So she was resistant at first. I don't have time. That's not gonna work for me, but I pressed her. I asked her, all right, you say you want to exercise more. So what's a form of exercise that sounds pleasurable to you? And she molded over and decided that doing an evening stroll with her dog would be pleasurable. Her dog was basically her kid, her sun, her moon, the center of her world. She loves his dog. So she started walking her dog every night and she discovered that it felt soothing and relaxing. So short walks turned into longer walks and her body appreciated the extra movement and her stress level started to drop. So she no longer felt the urge to stress eat at night. She slept more deeply. She felt more alert and vibrant. And she started settling into new boundaries at work and she felt more energized and powerful with her team. So she even got a promotion, lost 47 pounds. And then a few months later, during one of her evening pleasure walks, she noticed a cute guy at the dog park. So she found the courage to ask him on a date. He said, yes, so many incredible transformations, but it all started because she decided to add more pleasure into her daily routine. And this is not an isolated incident. I see similar transformations happen for so many of my clients. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Pleasure changes lives. So if you make pleasure a top priority in your life, this creates massive shifts. It boosts your energy, your mood, creates more momentum in your life. And again, there's many forms of pleasure. Walks, dog cuddles, bubble baths, books, music, movies, time with loved ones. And there are so many ways to take a task that might seem boring or dreary and make it pleasurable. You can encourage your clients to get creative 
and infuse more pleasure into their day. Your client does not need more willpower. They need more pleasure. This is a complete reversal of what most people believe. But I urge you to try this and encourage your clients to try this and see the results for yourself. So think about your own life. Are you pleasure deficient? Do you experience deep pleasure consistently every day or almost every day throughout your week? What are five things that bring you pleasure? Okay, a powerful exercise you can try with your clients. There are so many ways to help a client who's feeling stuck. We've covered a few approaches already. Right now, I wanna share one of my all-time favorite techniques with you. This is an exercise that I use often with my clients and with my kids and with myself, and one that's extremely effective. It's like a Jedi mind trick, and it goes like this. So, I mentioned a client who started adding walks to her day. Part of the reason that that's so important to move is because we are creatures that are built to move. This amazing meat suit needs movement to process emotion. So I don't care what you do, whether it's dancing around your living room, walking around the neighborhood, getting on your Peloton, going for a run, stretching, yoga, any form of movement will do. But before you do it, I want you to ask yourself, you're really asking your body, what do you most want me to know? And how are you trying to help me right now? And then when you start moving, tune in and see if you can hear the answer. What do you most want me to know right now? And how are you trying to help me? So when I started exercising almost 14 years ago, um, this little trick helped me get the guidance and the solutions that I needed in my business and in my life because our bodies hold so much wisdom that the mind can't even conceive of. So I call it a mind Jedi trick because the intuition and the information and the guidance is actually coming from the body and not the mind. You need the mind to process it, but it's the body that's gonna give you the gold. Okay, we've covered a lot so far, so let's do a quick recap. So far you've learned five reasons why people get stuck, low quality thoughts, exhaustion, weak or non-existent support network, imposter syndrome, and locked door syndrome. <laughs> Five ways to help your client clear these blocks or at least start to clear these blocks. Why willpower is not the solution. Why pleasure is the missing piece. And one really powerful Jedi mind trick exercise you can try with your clients right away. Okay, back to your worksheet. What's the main thing you've gained from this presentation so far? Is there one idea or concept or tip that's sticking with you, especially strongly? What is it? Write it down. As we're moving towards the end of this presentation, I would be remiss if I didn't include a segment on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So for this next part of the presentation, I'm primarily speaking to my white audience. If you are a Caucasian, this next part is for you. So here's the thing. If you're a therapist or counselor or life coach like me, it's possible that you've never received any training on how to work with clients who are black, people of color, queer, or otherwise part of a marginalized group. Or maybe you've got a little training, but not much. And this is a problem. This is a gap in your knowledge and it's hindering your ability to serve your clients effectively. So I wanna give you an example of how this gap can hinder your work. So here's a scenario. Studies show that if you have a white sounding name on your resume, a name like Mary or Charles, then you're 50% more likely to be called in for a job interview than if you have a 
black sounding name like Lakeisha or Jamal, even if you have identical resumes. So let's say a black client hires you. She comes into your office, she tells you her goal to get her dream job at an amazing company and secure a six figure salary. That's her dream. And you might tell this client, okay, great. Let's come up with a plan. And if you focus and work hard and think high quality thoughts, you can do this. Encouraging your client to make a plan and focus and cultivate a positive attitude is not bad guidance. But the problem is that it is incomplete guidance because your client may be facing obstacles that are not just internal. She may be facing numerous obstacles that are external as well. Obstacles like systematic racism, obstacles that you as a white person have never faced personally and that you might be completely unaware of. So saying think positively and work hard and you can win to a black woman who's experienced racism her whole life, that just doesn't totally make sense. That's not helpful. This is ineffective at best and harmful at worst. So we need to do better for our client's sake. I see far too many counselors, educators, and coaches graduate and enter the workforce with zero understanding of how to work with clients who do not look like you. This is a problem in our industry, and fortunately, it's a solvable problem. The solution is to get the education that you need. Fill in your knowledge gaps, address your blind spots, read books and listen to podcasts hosted by people who do not look like you, people who've had an entirely different human experience on this planet than you. Get high quality training on diversity, equity, and inclusion. This will elevate your skills to the next level and make you an even better service provider and put you in a position where you can help your clients get even better results. So we're coming towards the end of this presentation. You signed up for this presentation because you want to be a better service provider, the best you can be. You want to hone your skills. You want to add new tools to your toolkit. You want to have a profound impact on your clients and change their lives. I hope this presentation has given you at least one or two gems that you're excited to integrate into your work. And this presentation may have illuminated some gaps in your knowledge, some areas where you've got things to learn and room to grow. So if you've got some gaps, that's okay. Now you get to decide, what am I gonna do about that? One thing you can do is enroll to study at the University for Life Coach Training. Listen, whether you are currently a life coach, hoping to become a life coach, or a therapist, counselor, educator, manager, anyone else looking to gain new skills, the university is for you. We offer programs online. There's no travel required. When you train with us, you'll gain new tools to help your clients build confidence, clear obstacles, feel unstoppable, and accomplish their goals. Bring your skills to the next level. Fill gaps in your knowledge and gain greater mastery of your craft. Learn dozens more Jedi mind tricks and client exercises like the ones you learn today. Get diversity, equity, inclusion training from leading voices in the DEI field. Grow in surprising, unexpected ways. You will have emotional, creative, and financial breakthroughs of your own. We are determined to help you not only become a successful coach, but also become the very best version of yourself and a role model for your clients. With us, you gain professional skills and you gain tools to upgrade your own life too. So here's a peek at what you'll learn in our six-month program. Upon graduation from our program, you'll have the title of Certified Life Coach, and you may decide to work full-time as a coach, or you may take the coaching skills that you've learned and integrate these tools into the work that you already do. So for instance, like my friend Laura Wagner, you might continue to run a psychotherapy clinic and incorporate coaching tools into the work you're already doing, bringing a new edge to your work. So here's what you can do next. Visit our website, and then you can apply for the program and schedule a call with one of our coaches. Sign up for an information session, or go ahead and enroll in the program. When it comes to gaining additional education, it's tempting to put things off until later. 
oh, maybe not this year, maybe next year, maybe later. Here are five reasons why you should enroll and do a University for Life Coach training program now, not later. Because you want to be a healer in your field. You don't want to be a so-so therapist or pretty good coach or decent educator. You don't want to be just passable. You don't want to be just good or even great. You want to be excellent. You want to be a leader in your industry and you want to reach your highest potential. You want to do the most good for the most people. So to do that, You need to be continually honing your craft and staying on your growth edge. There is always more to learn. And the right time is always right now because these are unusual times. We're going through a pandemic, a recession, shaky economic times, all kinds of social justice change. We are building a new normal, a new way of living and working with clients. So now is a great moment to surround yourself with professors and peers who are creative, resourceful, resilient, flexible, people who are pivoting and working in new creative ways. You will find people like that at the University for Life Coach Training. And you need to find that kind of energy in your life right now because your clients are hurting and need help. This is one of the most stressful times in human history. Your clients are struggling, everyone's hurting, everyone's feeling depleted, everyone's distracted. So your clients need you to bring your absolute best self to every session. And they need you to bring new tools and gain new ideas. And that's what you'll gain from the university because you need some fresh energy and inspiration and joy in your life. Maybe you're experiencing pandemic burnout. You're feeling stagnant, bored, stuck at home, craving some new ideas and new energy in your life and work. You'll get all that from us because Maybe you've been feeling stuck lately. Maybe there's something you want to achieve in your own life. Maybe you want to grow your practice to the next level or start exercising regularly or write a book, start a podcast, declutter your garage or something else. Maybe you've been feeling stuck and overwhelmed and struggling to take action consistently. Studying at the university will help. You will gain tools that you can use with your clients and on yourself at the same time breakthroughs for them and for you. So for all those reasons and more, right now is a very good time to enroll and do a program like the university. You might have questions and we're here to help. Maybe you have a question about the curriculum or the time commitment or something else. Best thing to do, schedule a chat with our enrollment team or click on the video bubble and ask us a question. We're here to help you. Whether you're a counselor or therapist or executive coach or girls soccer coach, you chose your profession because you wanna be of service. You wanna help people lead their best, most successful and most fulfilling lives. I completely relate because that's what motivated me too. Thank you for choosing to do the work that you do. And thank you for watching this presentation. I hope your mind is swirling with good ideas that you can use with your clients right away. When it comes to the human mind, there's always more to learn. There's always more tools to gain. There's always more techniques to master. This work is endless. So I encourage you to continue on your journey towards mastering your craft. Pledge to learn at least seven new things every year. Keep growing, keep rising, and I hope to see you at the University for Life Coach Training. Whether you want to start a new career as a life coach or gain skills to enhance your existing career or bring a new edge to your work, this is the place for you. Learn how to help your clients feel more powerful and burn through overwhelm and achieve their goals. Learn how to help yourself do those things too. Training with us is a win for your clients and a big win for you too. I'm Susan Hyatt, and thank you again for taking the time to watch this entire presentation. You only get one life, make it beautiful and make it count.